Spoiler alert! Turns out, the Y chromosome is just as weird as we always thought it was. Because after decades and decades of human genome project, genetic mapping revealed that the sequence here is just not really what anyone expected. The complete sequence of human Y chromosome revealed that it's just weird. No better word to describe it. But not like alien weird or like, oh my god, biology is wrong weird. More like it just doesn't really make sense in a lot of different ways and in a lot of different structures. But anyway, how wonderful person, this is Anton. And today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries about the Y chromosome and also discuss another study in regards to animals that have lost their Y chromosome and in some sense are still surviving just fine. And so we're also going to try to answer the question of are humans losing Y chromosome and what's going to happen to humans when there is no Y left around. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the obvious. Human Genome Project, even though it's technically finished, is not finished. Despite a lot of different mapping that's already taken place, and despite solid understanding of what's happening in our genes, there are still a lot of secrets left here, and still a lot of unanswered questions, including questions about junk DNA. Now that's something we'll talk about in some of the other videos, but there are still some things here that we still do not understand completely. And one chromosome that was particularly challenging to map turned out to be the Y chromosome, the smallest of them all. And so even though a few years ago in the video in the description I've discussed some of the recent details and some of the recent discoveries about the Human Genome Project, it took a few more years and additional techniques to finally finish everything including the Y chromosome. The chromosome that, unlike other chromosomes, doesn't actually contain that many genes. Its main purpose is to determine birth sex in humans and other similar mammals. And so if the embryo acquires X and Y chromosomes, it technically becomes male because it contains a trigger known as SRY gene. Sex determining region Y protein, that sort of looks like this, that's responsible for switching on so-called male genes on other chromosomes. One of the most important one is known as SOX9 gene, the gene responsible for the development of testes. But this can be activated by other genes in other animals, and so technically this particular protein is not really required, but it seems to be pretty efficient and that's why Y chromosome became sort of the feature a lot of different mammals acquired. Although none of this seemed to have existed approximately 150 million years ago. Back then X and Y were just ordinary chromosomes the way they are today in, for example, birds. Birds don't have the same sex chromosomes as us. And there used to be two copies of the Y chromosome that contained approximately 1000 genes as well. But it's believed that around this time this is when SRI gene evolved and that's when this protein became extremely efficient at activating sex genes. And at this point the Y chromosome started to change quite dramatically. Various types of mutations led to a dramatic change of Y chromosomes, making them degenerate really fast, losing approximately 10% of all active genes per million years, basically reducing the number from approximately 1000 active genes to just 27. Here's roughly what it looks like now compared to the X chromosome. And because of this dramatic loss of genes, it was always assumed that eventually we might actually lose Y chromosome completely. I mean obviously it has the genes required to make sperm and even some genes critical for life. If you look at the bigger picture, copies of similar genes exist on the X chromosome as well. It just for the moment, Y seems to do a pretty good job. But one of the main reasons it was so difficult to actually try to read this chromosome or to try to map it is the fact that it's basically full of junk DNA. Nevertheless, the new study managed to sequence most of it, uncovering that it tends to contain multiple copies of similar Y genes, including genes responsible for sperm generation and genes responsible for testes. But for some reason, some of these genes occur in very strange loops where the sequence seems to be inverted or strange loops where genetic accidents can sometimes duplicate or even erase genes. In other words, its structure kind of makes very little sense. It's as if it's meant to be somewhat fragile and somewhat easy to mutate and potentially make mistakes. It also contains enormous amount of structures that contribute to pretty much nothing, once again junk DNA, where there are quite a lot of highly repetitive sequences that actually seem to be even coming from different viruses or genes that haven't been used for millions of years. Now that's common in the X chromosome too, but particularly common in the Y chromosome. 
Remember, this has at least a thousand active genes. This one here only has 27. And then, strangely enough, it also seems to have a really large chunk of glow-in-the-dark genes. Different types of structures that tend to bind fluorescent dyes. Why this is so is currently unknown. But then it also contains a somewhat pseudo-autosomal region that's sort of like a remnant from when it used to be similar to the X chromosome and in some cases is identical to some parts of the X. So when it comes to genetics, it's almost like the Frankenstein's monster of chromosomes. It's a combination of everything all together. But also the one that seems to make the least sense. But one question that a lot of scientists are trying to answer right now is, so what's the future of the Y chromosome? Where is it actually headed? Now different independent studies on genetics, usually using multicultural samples, have already detected that, as you get older, Y chromosomes tend to generally disappear. And more importantly, there is generally a sign of degradation in older bodies. And because of this, there have been actually several speculations that maybe at some point in the next 10 million years, the Y chromosome might be gone completely. Now, this is a somewhat controversial statement and it's not really scientifically proven just yet, but it's still something worth assessing because there are definitely signs of the Y chromosome decreasing in overall size and also decreasing with age. And so the question is, can it completely disappear? And what would happen to the species then? Turns out, it's happened before to several rodents in the last few million years. And though technically losing Y chromosome may mean the loss of sexual reproduction, it doesn't seem to be the case, at least for a well-known case of Amami spiny rats. They seem to have found a way to regress back to what it used to be like approximately 150 million years ago, evolving X chromosomes into new male sex chromosomes. These rats, though kind of rare, are quite common at least on some islands in Japan. And they all seem to possess just one X chromosome inside their body, both males and females. But it wasn't always like this. Genetical studies determined that they used to have a Y chromosome, but just like in mammals and just like in humans, it's basically disappeared over time. And specifically approximately 2 million years ago, certain types of duplication inside X chromosome were suddenly able to perform the same role as the Y chromosome in their ability to turn on SOX9 factor, which meant that they no longer required SRY gene that's present on the Y chromosome. As a matter of fact, it's believed that both were used by certain species, but over time, this possibly became redundant. And so it's possible that as the Y chromosome started to shrink, there was maybe a mixed population of males with and without Y that would then compete for resources. But around the same time, there was also a relatively major climate change which dramatically raised the sea levels, reducing the size of the islands, and thus, resources available. And then for some reason, the Y chromosome rats died out, the X chromosome remained. It could have been just luck, or it could have been something specific about the X chromosome that allowed them to thrive better. And they seem to be doing just fine. Basically, inside their X chromosomes, the male sex will usually have a lot more duplicated regions that tend to boost the activity of the SOX9 gene which leads to the male development, whereas the female mice will often not have any duplication of certain regions and thus remain as female. So basically it's a really simple adaptation that most likely exists in humans as well. Although maybe it's just not expressed as well yet because our genes are just more complex. Nevertheless, if the Y chromosome one day disappears, this is maybe one way that all of this could progress as well. But when it comes to the bigger question of, is this also our future? The answer is not really as clear. First of all, it still looks like the Y chromosome is doing fine for now. As a matter of fact, most mammals seem to have the Y chromosome and it's not really disappearing yet. But since the Y chromosome is shrinking with time, it's really just a matter of chance before something might evolve on the X that can basically perform the same roles as the Y chromosome is performing right now. And once that does happen, well, yeah, at that point, there's no point to have Y, so it's probably going to disappear pretty quickly. Now, if that actually happens or not, that's not a question we can answer. In those rats that I mentioned, it was basically a result of some kind of a pressure from the outside, and that's not really something we have right now as humans. As a matter of fact, most mammals with the Y chromosome may not have similar pressures for quite a long time either. And since SRY gene is so efficient at activating the sex genes, it might still stick around for some time. So, in the end, the answer is, I don't know, nobody knows. It's possible, it might disappear, or it might stick around for some time. 
What is pretty clear though, based on the recent analysis and the recent mapping of the Y chromosome, is that it's just really weird. So much more unusual than anyone thought, and has so many different unusual features and unusual qualities, including unusual sequences, that currently do not make sense. Which means that we're probably going to be coming back and talking more about all of this once there are additional studies and more discoveries. For now, the mystery of the Y chromosome remains kind of unanswered. It's tiny, it definitely shrunk over time, but it might stick around for some time. Anyway, at least for now that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. All of the studies are in the description below, check out the previous video on the Human Genome Project and its successes, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.